This video will introduce the research paradigm known as post-positivism. The important thing to remember about the posts, like post-structuralism, post-modernism, and post-positivism, is they aren't a rejection of whatever came before. Post means after. So they're an extension, an adaptation, a development of the ideas that came in their predecessor. The ontology of post-positivism, this is its understanding of what constitutes reality, is that reality is out there, it exists, there is something about it, and it's very similar to positivism in this way. But at the same time, there are limits to our ability to accurately capture it. And this sort of ties into the post-positivist epistemology. A researcher can build an approximation of the object of research, but never quite an absolute truthful picture of everything about it. The researcher is a data collection instrument and not a perfect knower of something. Part of the underlying rationality of post-positivism is the idea of falsifiability. Karl Popper helped bring around a change in the philosophy of science from the idea that we could create positive proofs, like a statement that all swans are white, um, to the null hypothesis, which you might be familiar with now. And that is that one single black swan is able to disprove the theory that all swans are white. So what you find now in science is a recognition that they can never perfectly know something is true, but a theory can be general, it can have some predictive capability, but we're always looking out for ways to falsify it. The archetype of the post-positivist you might think of as Jean-Luc Picard from Star Trek, and that's because the Federation tends to believe in reason, their value set is neutral, they take a neutral position towards the things that they're observing and studying, you only have to look at the prime directive, which prohibits interference with developing cultures and civilizations, and they've got universal sets of values, and they try to universalize their values as much as possible without interfering. In the Marvel Cinematic Universe, you might think of Tony Stark in Iron Man 2, who started to understand after his experiences in the first film, and Tony Stark expresses similar values in Avengers Age of Ultron, and that is that he's trying to protect the world, he's trying to do it reason reasonably, he's reasonably dispassionate, even though the character himself may seem passionate and energetic, in his application of engineering and science to the problems he tends not to be. A post-positivist, like a positivist, will see a city when they look at something like London. They might say something like, I can measure its size, but I'm aware that it's only an approximation. Greater London is growing all the time. How we define and measure London is imperfect, and so the picture is never quite complete. Even if we acknowledge that London is something objective and real, which we do, we can create some generalizations, we can create some descriptions, and we can use rigorous qualitative methods to define some elements of the city that wouldn't necessarily be captured by a positivist. Sometimes it can be easier to say what London is not.